Oh hi, it's your old buddy Zoo here, and today we're going to be making our own Steam OS console. Ooh. There are a couple of reasons why I wanted to do this. I've actually wanted to do it for quite a while, and we'll discuss them in the video. But I basically wanted to make a hub where I could play all my games locally, and also be able to stream them to my various devices around my house. So here is the Legion Go S, a powerful and ergonomic handheld that comes with Steam OS already built in. There are more powerful devices out there, but I think the real appeal of the Legion Go S is that Steam OS just, just comes with it. You turn it on, you log into Steam, and it's a very console-esque experience. It's one of the closest things we have to the Nintendo or the PlayStation experience in the retro handheld scene. It's super easy to use, everything's curated, your save games transfer from all over the places as long as you're logged into Steam, and it's just clean, right? It's clean, it's curated, it's great. It's console-esque. And so one of the easiest ways to give yourself a console-like experience in a console-like device is to get a mini PC. Like this mini PC here, the Boss Game 3 Plus. So let's move on to the specs for this device in particular, the Boss Game P3 Plus. As you can see here, it has an AMD Ryzen 7 7000 series. It's actually a 7840HS CPU, and it runs between 3.8 gigahertz and 5.1 gigahertz. It has eight cores, 16 threads, an AMD Radeon 780M GPU, which runs at a max of 2700 millihertz. This particular unit shipped with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, two 16 gigabyte sticks, and it has a one terabyte SSD with a maximum transfer rate of 8,000 millibits per second. This mini PC also has two SSD slots, allowing for expansion up to a maximum of eight terabytes. It also has Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. The Wi-Fi will come important later because I want to test out some local streaming. This particular model goes for $550 on Amazon, and you can always drop that down a bit with coupons or any Amazon points you might have saved up. It's kind of expensive, but it is cheaper than a lot of x86 handhelds, and you'll get more power. It really comes down to your use case. Like, if you don't play games at your house, and you can't stand streaming, then there's no point. Let's tear this thing down. Once you get those four screws out, you just pull on this little tab, and uh, there's the back of it. You can see here we have a big heat sink with a fan attached, and underneath you have full access to all your jazz. So upgrading it is super, super easy. Let's get this back on. In addition to that fan and heat sink on the back, there is a massive fan and heat sink on the front. And between the two of them, you shouldn't have to worry about this thing melting down unless you throw it in a drawer or some enclosed area without any airflow at all. Pretty slick, powerful machine in a compact form factor. Let's peel this thing off. Some ASMR. Eee. This ships with Windows 11 already installed, but I already have a couple Windows PCs. I want to turn this thing into a Steam box, and I'm going to show you how to do it. It probably wouldn't hurt to boot this up through Windows and update any kind of drivers you can before you flash over to Steam OS, but honestly, you want to make this as simple as possible and avoid backing up files. So if you're getting a brand new mini PC for this, I wouldn't really do too much on Windows if you're going to flash it to Steam OS. I pick this particular mini PC because official Steam OS runs really well on AMD devices. If you don't have one of these AMD machines, you can always throw Bazite on here, but I wanted to use the official build. No beta, no weird stuff. This is just stable, regular Steam OS. Installing Steam OS on here isn't super difficult, but it's not 100% built for these mini PCs. So do be aware that there is the potential for some uh-oh SpaghettiOs. I'm also doing this on two PCs, just because I have two available, but you could do all of these steps on your mini PC that you're eventually gonna turn into your Steam box. To begin the process, go to the Steam website and download the official Steam OS recovery image. This is designed for restoring a Steam Deck, but I use this method to install Steam OS on my Legion Go S Windows Edition before the official Steam OS version came out, and it should work with this device. Anyway, after downloading the zip file, you'll wanna extract it to your hard drive. 
you're going to need a USB drive with at least 8 gigabytes of storage. I'm using a Samsung USB-C drive, but as long as you have that 8 gigabytes of storage, you should be fine. You're going to want to plug the flash drive into your computer and use a program like Belena Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager to flash the recovery image to the flash drive. Now it is going to delete everything on that flash drive, so make sure you don't have any important stuff on there. Moving back over to your mini PC, you need to get your Steam box booted into the BIOS and set it to boot first from the USB drive. That's going to allow you to boot from your Steam OS recovery image and start this whole process. Plug your flash drive in, exit the BIOS, and restart the mini PC. It should boot right from the flash drive and start installing Steam OS. It's going to run for a while until your mouse cursor and a toolbar show up on screen, and then you're going to want to open the shortcut labeled Wipe Device and install Steam OS. Ooh. You'll see an installation window pop up and you're going to want to walk away. Just don't touch the computer. Let it run. Don't fiddle around with your computer until you get a pop-up that asks if you want to reboot. Shouldn't take too long. Tell it you're okay to proceed and your machine will restart again. Once the machine reboots, you should be at the SteamOS welcome screen. Log in, let the system run any updates, and start installing your games. And from here, you're good to go. Here's a little tip about your buddy Zoo. I'm not one of those super pedantic tech guys, so I'm not going to do a lot of crazy benchmarking. I'm just going to show you some games. I'm going to have the settings on the screen, and you can see how they run. trouble wrapping my brain around their beach. <laughs> Can you like flip something heavy? <sighs> This way, this time. Emulation is also going to be amazing and actually pretty simple on here. Once you get Emudex set up on here, you'll be able to play pretty much everything you want as long as there's an emulator available. There are crazy detailed tutorials on how to install Emudex, but basically, you just go into desktop mode and then install Emudex. You load your ROMs and your BIOSes, run all the setup stuff, and you're good to go. This machine will play PS3, Switch, Xbox, Xbox 360, and everything below that. You're really just limited by the compatibility of your higher-end emulator with the games you actually want to play. And even lesser stuff, like PS2 games, will run with crazy upscaling like NCAA football here. You can also use this as just a Linux machine if you want. Desktop mode, surprisingly, works kind of like a desktop. That's weird, right? And yeah, you, you basically have your own little Linux machine. You've got instant street cred with those nerds with the penguin stickers on their laptops. Just don't talk to them too much, because they'll probably make fun of you when they realize it's not a real Linux build, right? It's just SteamOS. Local streaming is another thing I wanted to test, and it works really, really good as long as your home network is somewhat functional and you have devices that can run Steam Link. The latency is super low, and you're basically just using your handheld as a screen and controller. 
This means you can get absurdly high battery life through streaming as opposed to running the same game locally on the device, if it's even something you can run locally. It's super cool in situations where you're at home, but you don't want to be tied to your desk. You can be playing some AAA games on your Retroid Pocket 5 from the living room or in your bed, and it really just helps expand your reach. Like, maybe you're tired, maybe your back hurts, you don't want to sit at your computer desk anymore. Just go lay down on a couch. Play Star Ocean on your Retroid Pocket 5. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now I had anticipated this being kind of a console-like experience because, you know, Steam OS is console-esque, but I really wasn't prepared for how much it felt like I made my own, I don't know, PlayStation 4 and a half. I had the mini PC hooked up to a monitor and keyboard for the initial setup, but my monitor is old as hell. It's actually one of those old combo DVD player TVs. It's something my wife had in her dorm way back in the early 2000s. And it wasn't working well with the aspect ratio of some of these games. So I ended up hooking the mini PC up to my projector. I did a video on that last year. Check that out. And holy crap, it transformed the entire project. By removing the mouse and the keyboard and just using a controller, I stopped using it like a mini PC. It honestly became a SteamOS console. I could go downstairs, plop on the couch, and have my games on a giant screen. And since this is powerful enough to run AAA games from a year or two ago, like God of War, it really does feel like I built my own Super PlayStation or Super Xbox. And that's cool as hell. I was really surprised by that aspect of this build. The fan is super quiet, and the mini PC is super small, so I tucked it on top of my projector, and it just kind of disappeared. Well, Gary, the clock on the wall says it's time for what did we learn? And we learned that if you want the full SteamOS experience in a console-esque form factor, you could do a lot worse than grabbing one of these mini PCs, as long as it's AMD based. Boss Game makes a solid device. I haven't had a single issue with this thing, and so I would strongly recommend trying to get one from them. You could probably spend a little less on one of their cheaper units if you just wanted to emulate old games and play indie Steam stuff, or pay a little more if you want even more power but this unit is in that not too cold, not too hot, just right space. Setting one of these things up right out of the box is as easy as pie as long as you're comfortable flashing an image file and changing boot order. It's honestly easier than installing some custom firmwares I've done. So don't be intimidated. If I could do it on my first try, you can too. If you don't want to mess around with any of the flashing, you could always just kind of use Windows 11 and start Steam in big picture mode, but you'll run into third party launchers Windows shenanigans like OneDrive randomly yelling at you during a game, and lower performance on some games. You'll also lose a lot of the console feel because Windows isn't really built for a controller. And if you don't want to be stuck in your den and you don't really jive with local streaming, then you can always just get a Steam Deck Bro or the Legion Go S, which I still use all the time. Really, really solid handheld, and I'm actually excited to see how the new Ally Xbox handheld will match up. So stay tuned for some exclusive footage on that soon. $550 is a pretty decent price for what you're getting here, especially if you're going to use it for gaming and treat it like a Steam console. Think about it. The PS5 Pro goes for what, like 700 bucks? And if you've already got a library going on Steam, then all your games transfer over. That transferability, ease of use, save syncing, and the UI of SteamOS really make this a seamless, console-like experience. Honestly, to a degree I didn't really anticipate. So basically, I got everything I wanted out of this device and a little more. If you got all you wanted out of this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. We're gearing up for fall, which means all these companies are going to be releasing a ton of new devices and lowering prices in time for Christmas. So be sure to ring the bell so you get notifications on all of our upcoming videos, live reviews, and podcasts. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Goodbye.